Hey guys, welcome back to Little Boy Customs. 1944, been on the channel several times. We have finally sold this car and it is gone. We're at the new owner's location out in West Texas and we are dropping this car off. Something interesting to tell you though, we have a new car we're picking up on the way home and I will reveal it shortly. Alright guys, so if you saw the beginning of this video, you know that the 1944 Ford is gone. Yes, we sold it. So, we took it out to West Texas yesterday. This is the following day. While we were in West Texas, we did pick up our next car that we are going to tinker with on this channel. So, it's in that trailer. Let me show it to you. New car to the channel is a 1955 Chevrolet convertible Bel Air. It is an all original car. It hasn't been on the road in 30 years. Hasn't run in 30 years. The guy that owned the car was uh, involved in some legal matters and then the car got stored inside of one of his warehouses and hasn't been running, driven, anything in 30 years. So the goal of this car here is to go through everything on it it does look really nice and shiny because uh, he did wash it before I came and picked it up. Unfortunately, I wish it still had the dirt on it so that we could do a before and an after. But we will still, we're going to polish this car out, clean it all up as much as we can, get the 30-year leftover dirt that's on it off. Then we're going to go through the entire engine, get it up and running, hopefully. And this will be our new channel car for a little bit. So if you see us pointing at this car, we just got done washing it and we haven't clay barred it, nothing like that. But I don't know if you can tell it in the camera so well, but if you look at this car at an angle, it looks like it has some sort of a film on it. So right here, the car looks like it's all one color. And then it looks like it has speckles all up through here. And then of course they're running down the door of this car here. And it's not just this door, this door, it's the entire car is that way. So, uh, we're going to try and clay bar it and see if it's some sort of a chemical that's on the paint from the previous owner. Maybe it's some sort of a wax they used or something like that. But we're going to clay bar the car and see if we can't get that off. Alright, so we've moved the car over into the shade. I spared you the time lapse of having to watch this clay bar it, but we used a liquid form clay bar instead of just your generic clay bar that you'd normally use. Uh, we've had luck with this chemical before in some other cars. So, this is the finish that it looks like. You put it on wet, wet the car, then you use this liquid that's called clay bar and uh, rub it in kind of like you do wax. And then you let the whole thing dry. It's going to get to this crusty stuff right here. And then you'll just use a microfiber cloth and wipe it back down. And then, of course, we'll put some shiner and stuff like that on it as it... Uh, as we do this to see if we can get that shine back out in this paint. Today's the day we're gonna to try to get the engine to start. So we've got a new battery right there onto the car and uh, all the lights are working. 
uh, blinkers, even the radio kicked on after it warmed up. It's got the old tube radio in it, so the AM radio finally kicked on. Uh, and the clock and the dash started working as well. So today we're going to try to get this engine running. And let me get you in there and show you what we're looking at. So the oil bath air filter would have set right here. We've taken that off and we dumped a little bit of gas into the carburetor here. When I did that, gas came flooding out just as fast as I was pouring in uh, down here at the bottom where the carburetor and the intake ma match up. So we didn't try to start the car because of that. We don't want it to start up and there be a fire or something like that. Not at this point. So, ordered a new carburetor kit for this carburetor. And we're going to take this carburetor off, take it all apart, and then try to put the new carburetor kit on it and put it back on and start this car up. Now, the gas that was inside the tank... We actually drained it in the back because the car hadn't been set. It, well, the car hasn't started in 30 years. So uh, we drained the gas out of the back of it by removing the plug at the bottom of the tank. and let, It only had about an eighth of a tank in it, or we're guessing. Uh, pretty nasty gas. It stunk really bad. Uh, had really dark color to it. So we're, we may have to end up cleaning the tank on this car as well. And then the other thing that we're going to do is the uh, fuel pump that is right there. We're going to uh, look at it and make sure that the diaphragm and all that good stuff that's inside of it is still uh, usable and hasn't rotted and uh, fallen apart from being dry for quite some time. So we'll check it out too. All right, so after taking the linkage off here, for the throttle and everything. And then you have a fuel going in here and then uh, fuel vapor going down to the manifold over there. And then four bolts or nuts that are on the studs. The carburetor is now off. And uh, we're ready to start taking this apart to get it ready to be cleaned up.
so while we're waiting on the carburetor to finish cleaning up that we took out there, the next thing we're going to do is remove this MSD ignition coil here. So the car's still running on points back there in the back, but somebody's put a MSD uh, high voltage blaster to coil on here, and we're going to take that off. And then we're going to check the points on the car and uh, make sure all that's good. And then most likely we're going to change this ignition uh, out to one that's a little lower voltage so it doesn't burn those points up. So we bought points for this distributor back here. And the original 1955 would have been a single point system. After we took the cap off of this one here. Found out that this is a 1956 Corvette distributor, uh, so it has the dual points in it. So we got the wrong points for that, so we'll have to stop on that part. Okay, after two days of soaking, the carburetor is really pretty clean now. And to save a little bit of time, we went ahead and we wanted to paint the outside of the carburetor to kind of make it look more newer whenever we get it back on the car so we've painted the outside of the carburetor now the inside that's just how clean it is from the chemical that we put it in and we taped this off a little bit and then painted the bottom half of this uh, so the carburetor still tore apart but today we're going to put it back together
So the only thing left from where we dropped off at was put the bolts in, screw the two pieces together, and then putting all the hardware on from the linkage to the accelerator, and of course the choke, and then fuel inlet for the glass filter, which is right there. We're still waiting on the fuel filter itself to come in, but, and then of course, bolting on the base plate down here at the bottom as well. So, carburetors rebuilt, put back on. Coils put back in. Uh, and we're hooking up the gas lines right now to the carburetor, and then also down here to the new fuel pump. Just went out and bought a brand new fuel pump for it, so we put that in too. And uh, we got to run the lines back into the fuel pump and then from the fuel pump up to the carburetor. And then uh, the inside of the tank, gas tank was really, really rusted out, so we've ordered a new gas tank for this car also. Um, the old one's just, it's not salvageable. Yeah. Too late. Now this is dangerous. Give you an underside of how the car looks from underside, of course. That's a new gas tank that we put in there. As you can see, the underbelly of this car is pretty clean. No major rust in the uh, frame, nothing like that on this car. All right, guys. So we finally got the uh, carburetor re rebuilt. Is back on. Got a new fuel pump down here. Uh, we still need to replace this fuel line that's right here. It should be here later today. Uh, we're going to try to see if we can limp this fuel line here along. It's not leaking, but it is uh, like dry rotted looking uh, when you take it off and that kind of stuff. Uh, got us a new battery. We went with the uh, interstate flavor. So uh, mainly it was uh, the price. You know how that is. Uh, topped off the radiator. Uh we were a little concerned that maybe it had a pinhole down here at the bottom of it, but it doesn't. We pulled it out, uh, kind of cleaned it up a little bit, realized that it was just some uh, antifreeze that had, when they were filling this up here, it had uh, dripped down there, and of course it didn't evaporate or anything. Got a little corrosion right in that area right there. So uh, got that all cleaned up, topped this back off. We think we're ready to give it a start, see what happens. Um, the other thing we did change is the uh, that coil right there. Uh, we changed it back to the type of coil that should have been on it originally. Uh, so let's give her a start and see if she'll crank over and start up for us. Hers like a kitten. This engine hasn't started in 30 years. She's running pretty good now. We did put a little gas in the uh, carburetor up here to make sure the bowls were full. Sounds good. Got my old man here with me. We're gonna take the old 55 out for a spin real quick. How do you feel about going on 1984 tires, Dad? Yeah, they're a little bit shaky, but they shouldn't have too bad of a time with them. If they blow out, then we'll just have to walk back home. <laughs> I hope we don't have to walk back home, but 
it wouldn't be the first time we've done that. Pretty cool thing about this car here is it does have some of the options for 1955, like this seat that we're sitting in is a power seat. It still has the manual windows in it. It doesn't have the power windows, which was an option back then. But the, uh, the radio here, correct me if I'm wrong, Dad, Dad, but I believe this is called the Wonder R radio. That's right. So that was a upgraded option. The top bar right here, you could press it, and it's pretty much our seat button that you we have on our radios nowadays. Of course, this is a AM radio in this car, and it is the old tube style radio, which means that you have to let the tubes warm up before it'll start playing, but once they warm up, you'll finally find an AM radio station and it'll start working. Closest you've ever been to a 55 convertible was your 56, Dad? Yeah, I had 56 when I was in high school and I had a friend that was in high school along with me and he had a 55 convertible. And his was in pretty good condition, about the same as this one is. And I done everything I could to try to talk him out of that 55, but he had no part of that conversation. So I was stuck with my old rusted out 56. We survived. <laughs> you see my dad, it looks like he's fighting the steering wheel, but he's really not. What's going on is the 1984 tires that are underneath this car have hardened. And of course we're going down back roads because what better way to drive an antique car but the uh tires are finding the grooves in the roads and just following those and so it looks like he's fighting the steering wheel but it, to keep it on the road but it's actually just the opposite he just the wheels are following the grooves in the road and so therefore he's had it jerks the steering wheel a little bit limit and keeping up with traffic that's a good thing about these old Chevrolet V8s they had more than enough power to keep up with traffic even in today's world all right guys that's pretty much it for this car here 1955 hasn't started in 30 years redid the entire fuel system on the car points and all that works great on it it was getting plenty of electricity it just needed a new battery uh redid the entire fuel system uh gas tank fuel pump carburetor everything car still runs great um we did have a little bit of trouble with the transmission and uh, it was leaking so we did do some uh, minor repairs on transmission as far as putting seals in it and that kind of stuff it is now not leaking and uh but for a car that hasn't run in 30 years, uh, about four weeks worth of work, and the car is about ready to go back on the road. We do need to put new tires on it still, but other than that, that's about it. Uh, there's a couple of other little things that we want to do to this car, like put AC in it, that kind of stuff. That way, here in Texas, when it's hot summer months, we can actually uh, not burn up in the car. So... Uh, from our family to your family, happy Thanksgiving. Hope you all have a great holiday. Appreciate you watching the channel. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And until next time, thanks for watching.